My name is William Justice. Today we're going to talk about one of the most frequent questions I get, all about expressions in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. It's a simple concept, but it does seem a bit magical. What's really going on? Once you understand them, the trick is really knowing when to use them and why. Honestly, I didn't want to make an expression video until I thought I had something really interesting to do. So I think I've come up with it. Hopefully you enjoy the video. Okay, I want to be clear. I'm not an expression expert. I'm just trying to learn and get better. We're going to go over the basics of how to use expressions to modify properties. Then we're going to use an expression script to set up this animated counter. A lot of you, based on your questions, seem to be really interested in expressions. Hopefully you'll enjoy this video. If you do, like the video, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate your feedback, so comment below and I'll definitely get back to you. Let me know what you use expressions for. I've also set up a real quick expression cheat sheet, and I'm going to be growing this over time. If you go to buildjustice.com resources, you'll be able to see some real quick things that you can use in expressions. We're in Fusion with a blank composition. Let's make some expressions. We're going to start with two rectangles. What can we do with expressions? We can modify a property with a number or formula. We can use values from other nodes and properties. We can animate properties over time. We can use built-in functions such as date, add scripting and coding logic, and a bunch of other things that I really can't even think of right now. All right, we have our two rectangles set up. We're gonna use each of these rectangles to demonstrate how the expressions can work. We have rectangle one right here, which is the blue rectangle, and the rectangle on the right is the green rectangle. We have a background node for each, with a rectangle mask that's creating the shape and that's going into a transform node. And we're gonna use these transform nodes to adjust properties with expressions to demonstrate what you can do with them. How do you add an expression to a property? We're gonna click transform two and go over to the inspector. Most of these properties can have an expression set up on them. All you need to do is right click on the property and choose expression from the pop-up menu. Let's right click on size and choose expression. We get an input box down here, which is where we can enter our expression value and it defaults to the current value of the property. With the expression enabled, the edit controls no longer work. You need to edit it down in the box below. To remove an expression, you just right click on the property and choose remove expression. The simplest expression that we can set up is just entering a number value in this box. The size goes from zero to one, that's the scale. So let's enter 0.3 and the size of the box is scaled down. We can add a little math, we'll say 0.3 times two and the box is scaled up to 0.6. Now we're gonna connect the size of the green rectangle to the size of the blue rectangle. We just need to enter the node name and the property we want to use. We're going to enter transform one dot size. Transform one, this is the name down here of the node and size is the property. Now both rectangles are the same size. If we go to transform one and adjust the size, they both adjust. Let's go back to transform two. We can add a quick formula and multiply times 0.5 and that's going to set transform two to be half the size of transform one. What if you don't know the name of the node or the property you wanna use? Let's click transform one, hold control, and click transform two. Then we're gonna click the little pin icons up here, and that's gonna put both transform one and transform two in the inspector. Transform one is on the bottom and transform two is on top. Let's set the blue rectangle to have an angle of 45. So we'll go down to the inspector, we're under transform one, set the angle to 45. So let's get the green rectangle to match. We can right click the angle property, choose expression. We could type in transform one here, transform one dot angle, and it's gonna use that angle property. The other thing we could do is click this little plus icon and it's gonna have this line. You draw the line to the property that you wanna use. So we're gonna draw it down to angle. And what that does is it puts the name of that property of how it's referenced into the expression field. You can do this with anything. If we space over, we can hit the plus again and we can drag it down to say pivot, and we got transform one dot pivot. So it's just a quick shortcut to help you know what to put into the expression field. So now the angle for both is connected. If we wanna make the green rectangle spin a bit faster than the blue rectangle, we can go to the expression and multiply the angle times four, or really any number. And now the green rectangle is gonna rotate quicker than the blue rectangle. If we wanted to rotate in reverse, we just have to multiply it by say negative two and the green rectangle is gonna spin in the opposite direction of the blue rectangle. Just a quick note, if we um, select a node and rename it with F2, um, once we rename it, all the expressions will be updated with the new name for the node. So how can we use expressions to adjust the position of the rectangles? Let's uh, adjust the position of the green rectangle. We'll go to the center property in the transform two node. We'll right click on it and choose expression. And what this put in here was a point 
and the point is the X position with a comma followed by the Y position. To move it, we can simply change this and we'll say it's 0.8 and it's gonna shift over a little bit. Let's set the green rectangle position to be the same as the blue, blue rectangle for the X value. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna go, we're gonna type in transform one dot center dot X. What that did was it set the point or the position for the center to match the position of the blue rectangle. So if we move the blue rectangle, the green rectangle is going to move along with it. Now you notice that we didn't do anything with the Y position. So if we move the rectangle up and down, the X position changes, but the Y position of the green rectangle stays the same. And we can add a little math in here. We could say the center X plus 0.3, and that's gonna make it 0.3 to the right of the blue rectangle. How do we animate something over time? We're gonna use the time variable. So let's add a text node and we'll go to the text node in the inspector. We'll right click on styled text and choose expression. And we're gonna enter in this value time and bring it up to the top so that we can see it. So basically what time is, it's a variable that changes throughout your animation that matches the current frame you're on. So if we go to frame 40, the time is on frame 40. It just changes as we go through the animation. How can we use this time variable to animate a property? The quickest thing we can do is to set the value of the angle to match the current frame. We'll go to transform one, it's our blue rectangle. It's right down here. And you can see the, the angle goes from zero and it just keeps on going up. Let's reset it to zero. We're gonna right click on the angle, choose expression, and our expression is going to be time. So whatever the value of time is, that's going to be our angle. So as we play the animation, the angle of the rectangles are changing based on the time. So if we're on frame 45, the angle of the blue rectangle is 45. To make the animation go a little faster, we just multiply the time times, let's say three, and it's going to be rotating at three times the frame rate. So when we're on frame 30, the angle is now 90. We do the same thing. If we want to slow it down, we just divide it. So we can divide the time by three. And the angle is going to change slower than the, the frames are changing. Okay, this is pretty interesting, but you'll notice a lot of these properties, um, they don't have really big values like the time. Um, they're going from zero to one and 0.5 and things like that. What can we do to use the time for those properties? The best way to think about it is to think about time as a percentage. To demonstrate time as a percentage, I've set up this formula up at the top and I put it into this text note so we can see it. We have the time, the current time, which is the current frame divided by 80. So we're gonna animate and do a time interval over 80 frames. So right now, this is the current value. We're on frame zero, divide that by 80, we're at 0%. Let's, you'll notice that when we move forward in the animation, let's say um, 10 frames in, it's 10 divided by 80, which is 0.125, which is 12.5%. And we'll keep playing along. And by the time we get to frame 80, I'll go ahead there, we're at one. So what we've effectively done is we've created, by using time divided by 80, we've created an expression that goes from zero to one. And you can change the time interval. If you want this time to be longer or slower, you can, so for example, if you wanted it to be five seconds, you would put 20, this is a 24 frames per second um, uh, video. This is a 24 frames per second video. So you could do 24 times five. That'll give you five seconds worth of time interval going from zero to one. So let's use this technique in our blue rectangle angle. We'll hit transition one. And you see right there, we had time divided by three. Let's get rid of that and let's do this a different way. Let's say we want it to spin 360 degrees in 80 frames. So this is our time divided by 80. So we are 360 degrees times time divided by 80. Now you'll notice when we're on the very first frame, the angle is zero. That's because the time divided by 80 is zero. By the time we get to frame 80, the time is one and the angle is 360. What we've done is we've set the blue rectangle to animate 360 degrees over 80 frames. But now you'll notice that it keeps animating. And this is because now we're over a one there. So it's going to keep increasing the angle. So to get the animation to stop at 360 degrees, we're going to use a built-in expression function. Let's adjust the expression. We're going to type in min with a parentheses, and this is going to return the minimum value. We're going to add a 360 and close it. So we have the min of our expression here, which is 360 times our time, comma 360. What this function does, it returns whichever is the lower value, the first one or the second one. So now when we do this, when we get to frame 80, it's going to stop right there. So we could actually have it stop it. So we could really have it stop at any angle. Let's put in there 160. As the animation is running and it gets to an angle of 160, 
it's going to stop because it's returning the lower of these two values. And obviously 160 is lower than what this is computing to right now. Now that we know how to use time as a percentage, let's create a really quick progress bar. Just takes a few seconds. We'll add a merge node. We'll put a background on the merge. So let's click on the rectangle mask for our progress bar. You'll notice that the width goes from zero to one. And we just learned how to do that. So let's put in a quick expression. We're gonna right click on the width choose expression. We're going to say time divided by 20. And what this means is it's going to take 20 frames to go from zero to one based on their percentage. So right there within 20 frames, it was a full width progress bar, but usually you want the, pro you want the progress bars to automatically go to the length of the animation. Well, there's a convenient variable that we can add called comp dot render end and comp dot render end is the last frame. So in this case, let's, uh, let's go back up to our expression up here. And we're going to put uh, time dot dot with a space, two more dots. This is how we build the, the string in here. Right now we're on frame 19 and the last frame is 119. We go to the very end. So let's go back to our rectangle and we have time divided by comp dot render end. That means that it's going to take the full length of the animation to go from 0% to 100%. So another fun thing we can do to get a repeating animation is to use the sine function. It's a, it's a trigonometry math function we pass it an angle and it, and it returns alternating values between negative one and one. So we're going to go sine of time as our expression. It starts bouncing back and forth. It disappears because it actually goes negative. So we're not seeing the width to fix that. We do the ABS function, which is absolute value. And that's always going to return a positive number. So if you pass it a negative, it's going to give you a positive. Next thing is we just need to slow it down. Just like we did before you multiply to speed things up, divide to slow it down. So we're going to divide it by five and we got a bouncing progress bar. All right, so we've been using the time. So let's, uh, let's make a real, super quick countdown timer. Let me show you how that works. We're gonna click on text one, go to our expression, and we're just gonna start by narrowing time. Now, this video is in 24 frames per second. So if we divide the time by 24, that's gonna show the number of seconds that the video has been playing. So if we go to 24 frames, we should be at one second. 48 frames is two seconds. Okay, so you see we're getting all these decimal places. Let's remove those. We can use a built-in function called floor that's gonna take whatever your fraction is, or whatever your decimal number is and round it down to the very lowest whole number. So we're gonna type in floor with a parentheses and put our time divided by 24 in that and we got two. So now we're counting up. Let's say we wanted to count down from three. All we need to do is go three minus whatever we're counting up from and we're gonna have the number start at three Go to two, one, count down, and then it goes negative. So to get rid of the negative, we can use the max function. Type in max, what our current expression is, comma zero, and close that out. And that means it's gonna return the larger of the two values, either the first part or the second part. And since the first part is currently negative, we see zero. Next, I'm gonna show you how to enter a super easy dynamic date. Let's go to our text field right here, get rid of this expression, and we're gonna type in os.date. And there we have it. This is the current date and time when I'm making this video. And when you play it, you'll see that the time updates. Now, one thing is a lot of, sometimes these frames will get cached. So when you're replaying it, you may not see exactly what you're going to see when you make the final video. What, what ends up happening is when you render the video, it's going to be the current date and time of when the video is being rendered. All right, let's edit our date and put in some percent variables. We have percent A, percent B, percent D. So what those are, are those date, are date format variables. Um, I'm, I have a reference on my website, billjustice.com, and I'm gonna pop up a little window here um, to see, show you all the different options that you can use with the date. That's a very basic overview of just a few of the things you can do with expressions. Obviously, you won't be using these techniques all the time, but hopefully understanding how they work um, will help you see where they might be useful. Now it's time for the animated counter. The first thing we're gonna do is create a basic number, and then we're gonna replicate that to build columns, and we're gonna animate each of these columns. There's some different ways to do this without creating as many numbers, but this was gonna be a little bit easier to demonstrate how the expression works because um, I only need to put them in one place as opposed to having to put them in multiple nodes. So we're gonna create a background node and we're gonna put a mask on it. And this is what we're gonna put our number on. So let's set the background to white and go to the rectangle. Now the height needs to be a fixed height for this animation because we're gonna animate it by this fixed height. So we're gonna set the height to 0.25 and bring the width in. The width does not matter as much. We're gonna add a little bit of corner radius to give it a rounded look. And then we're gonna add a shadow. Let's add our first number. We're gonna add a merge node, connect the shadow into the merge node. So for our numbers, we're gonna add a text node. 
and we're gonna put that into the merge. We're gonna start out with number zero. Set the color to black, and let's increase the size. So that's our first number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a column of numbers going up and down, and then use the expression to animate the Y position to get the rotations. The first step to building this is to create merges for each of the nodes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a merge node, and I'm just gonna make 10 of these. Then I'm going to take this shadow that we have. So this is basically the background, and I'm going to put that into the background for each of the merges. So next, we're going to, we're going to um, create instances of this text node so that we can customize the style really easily. So with text one selected, hit Control C to copy it, and we're just going to hit Control V ten times to make our instances. So now that we have each of the text instances, we just need to drag the output of the text and merge it in on top of the number background. So we're going to move the shadow up on top, and we're going to take all these text nodes and move them off to the other side here. So this is the, the beginning of our column. Now what we need to do is, for each of these text nodes, we need to de-instance the styled text and change the number. So the first one is going to be zero, so the next one needs to be one. So we're going to click on it, right click on styled text, choose D instance, and set it to one. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do this for all the rest of the nodes. Okay, our column is almost getting there. We have all the numbers, but right now they're sitting on top of each other. So we're going to take the lower one and merge it onto the one that's right above it. And we're just going to do that for each of these. And we'll hit two on the last merge there. So now what you see is when we come to this, this merge four, we can adjust the Y position and there's our number one. So we just need to space these out. So since each of these is 0.25 high, I'm gonna space them out by 0.28 and just keep that consistent. So I'm gonna go through each of these and add 0.28 to it to get a column of numbers. We have our column set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some transform nodes to move the columns around. So let's create three transforms for column one, column two, and column three. We're gonna take this one column we created and put it into each of these transforms. So transform one is going to be the ones column, transform two is gonna be the tens column, and transform three is gonna be the hundreds. So let's, tra take transform, let's take transform one and the X position and slide it over. Um, let's merge these together real quick so we can see what we're doing. Let's go back to transform one, shift it over just a bit. Transform two is gonna stay in the center for that column and transform three, let's move it over to the left. Okay, there we go, we got our three columns. We're gonna add some more transform nodes in here to adjust the Y position of the columns. With transform one selected, let's add a transform in between, same for transform two and transform three. So we're gonna put our expressions in these transforms and I'm gonna rename them to ones, tens, and hundreds. So to show you how this works, we'll hit on the ones column and we can adjust the Y position and you'll see that we have the whole column and we can move, move, it, move it up and down. So we're gonna use an expression that's going to adjust the Y position for us based on time. The expression is a bit long, but it seems to work pretty good. Um, I wish it performed a little bit better. It doesn't seem like it's overly complex. Um, it slows fusion down just a bit. What I'm gonna do is plug these in real quick, show you how it's working, finish the setup, after that, stick around and I'm gonna break down the expression a little bit and show you exactly how it's working. So we'll go to our ones transform, right click on the center position, hit expression, and I'm gonna get rid of that and paste in my expression. Oh, it looks like we're missing a number there. So I have to go back and fix that. Okay, I, fi I fixed that problem. One of the numbers was just off a bit. Now, the one other thing we need to do is we need to add a nine on top of here all right, let's add in our expression for the ones column. So we're gonna hit the ones transform node, make this a little bit bigger so we can kind of see what's going on. We're gonna right click on center position, choose expression, get rid of that point, and we're gonna paste in the expression I came up with. This is rotating every half second, so it goes a little bit faster. One of the things I did is I put a mask on this so that we can only see the middle number. So let's take the output of all three columns and merge it into a background, and we're gonna mask that. And let's take a look at that merge. We'll go with the mask and adjust the soft edge just a touch, 
and bring it down so the, the numbers kind of are fading out as they rotate. I'm going to go ahead and do the tens and hundreds. So we'll go with tens and we're going to right click on center, choose expression, paste in the expression and the tens column will now rotate. And same thing with the hundreds. We'll click the hundreds transform, right click on center property expression and we'll paste it in. And now we have a fully working counter that once it, once it gets past 100, it's just going to keep on going. Okay, so that's the basic setup. It's Once you have the column set up, it's really easy. The expression was not super difficult to come up with. It just took a little bit of playing with the numbers to get it to work the way I wanted. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take these numbers and stick them down on the side. And I'm going to put out the expression there so you can kind of see how it's working. Okay, let me paste in the expression. I've added a text node. And you'll see it's way too long. I can size this down to get it to fit, but it's going to be pretty small to go over. Okay, so it's time to tackle this big bad expression here. Let's uh, let me break it down and show you exactly what I did. The top line up here, this is what I this is what we entered into the expression field. It's a little bit hard to see and hard to break it down. So what I did is took the line, broke it down, and put each of the statements on its own line so we can kind of see how they're working. So let me walk you through what I did. So the first line is frames equals 12, and there's a colon in front of it. And I think what the colon does is it tells the expression that you're going to be adding script or multiple statements in there. Frames is 12, meaning I want to rotate a new number every 12 frames. We could set that to 24 and it would rotate every second, but I wanted it to go, I wanted it to go a little bit faster. TM is our time. So we're going to do the time plus 12. We're just doing that to kind of jumpstart the animation so it's not starting out at zero. H is the height that we're going to move the column for each number. So we have the height of each number at 0.25, the spacing at 0.28. I'm going to adjust the Y position of the column by 0.28. Count. Okay, so count, this is basically the count, the number that we're trying to show. So we're trying to show 142 here. You can see 142. As we play the animation, you'll see the count go up and the counter goes along with this count here. So we'll just skip ahead. So at this point, we're trying to show number 128. So we're dividing the time by the number of frames and that gets us our count and it's just going to keep going up. This is the expression for the ones column. So we want to get the digit in the ones column. So we're going to take the count and use this percent operation by 10. And this is called a mod operation. And basically what it's doing is it's taking our current count, which is 128, dividing it by 10, and it returns the remainder. So if we divide 128 by 10, we have a remainder of eight. So we know that this column, we're going to try to show digit eight right now. D frames is the number of frames since we just switched to a new number. So we're going to take the time, divide it by the frame, and do the same mod operation by the number of frames. And when this is zero, that's when we just detected a new number. So D frames is 11. We're going to go forward one frame. And we're going to be, now we want to show number 128. So D frames is zero. And as we skip ahead, it's going to go to two, three, four. And I'm using D frames to animate this column right here. And once it gets past seven, the animation stops. Okay, the next line, this is where our logic happens. It's an IIF, which is an if statement. The way this works is you put in a, a bit of logic here, in this case, D frames greater than seven. So it's gonna be a true or false. If it's greater than seven, it's gonna return this first part after the comma. If this is false, meaning it's less than seven, it's gonna return the second part over here. When we're greater than seven, we return whatever the digit is, in this case, eight times our height. And we're gonna use that when we return a point at the bottom. So that's setting the position based off the height. As the digit gets higher, we're going to be offsetting the height by more. The last part here is if the D frames is less than seven, this is where we're going to do our animation. We're going to take the previous digit and get what its height should be. Then we're going to add our height, which is 0.28 times a fraction here. And this is going to be our D frame. So if D frames is zero, we're going to be adding nothing to the height. Once it gets to two, three, we're going to add, be adding a little bit more and a little bit more. And once it gets to seven, we're going to be adding the full height because D frames divided by seven is one. I know there's a lot of math in there. I hope you could kind of understand it and follow along. And that's basically how it works. This is the expression for the ones column. The expressions for the tens and hundreds columns are almost identical. The only difference is here for the frames, we're going to multiply this by 10 or by hundred. And down here in this frames, we're going to multiply this, the frames times 10 or hundred. And that's going to get us the correct digit. And it works just the same. Now I also have this other script. I, I think I'm probably not going to include it because this video is getting pretty long. Um, but we, what we can do is we can, if we select this column, we can remove this expression here 
and click on the settings and in the frame render scripts we can go into this area and put in a slightly different script that does exactly the same thing. We can put in some Lua code to set the position just like the expression does. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about expressions and maybe got a few ideas of some things that you can do with them. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos about DaVinci Resolve filmmaking and maybe some interesting ideas. Comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.